Landlords have filed an emergency application to stop the CDC's eviction moratorium. And it's my belief that the Supreme Court is going to throw it out. And I'm going to tell you exactly why. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing and Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today. And it's going to go over some of the reasons why the um, CDC is going to lose this court battle and the Supreme Court's going to throw out this eviction moratorium, okay? And also at the end of the video, I'm going to show you some pictures of a protest that some landlords up in New York City were going after the governor and they decided to go out and actually put on a protest, you know, and I want you to show these New York landlords some support. So before I get into the articles though, go ahead, hit that like and subscribe button, maybe leave a comment down below and let me know what you think is going to happen once this eviction moratorium issue hits the Supreme Court. If you think the Supreme Court's going to throw it out like I do, or if you believe that they're going to keep it going and if it does keep going, what exactly is going to happen with it? So this article, it comes from reason.com and it says, as eviction moratorium case returns to the Supreme Court of the U.S., landlords use Biden's words against him. Yeah, Biden said that he wasn't going to reinstate, you know, the thing. He said that he didn't believe that it was legal, yet he did it anyway. And, you know, obviously I have a big problem with that. A lot of people have a big problem with that. And these, you know, in their briefing for the Supreme Court and against their uh, the CDC eviction moratorium, they went straight after him. And I hope that the people at the Supreme Court really listen to the words that the attorneys for these landlords say. So let's get into it. Unless this court vacates the stay and does so promptly, Congress will know it can legislate through pressure campaigns and sit-ins rather than bicameralism and presentment. Earlier today, the DC Circuit declined to disturb the CDC's eviction moratorium. Now landlords have filed an emergency application to vacate the stay with the Supreme Court. Chief Justice Roberts already ordered DOJ to respond by Monday. Back in June, he gave the government seven days to respond. The chief means business here. This application explains how the administration bungled the extension, and it uses President Biden's words over and over again. Actual words, and not just tweets. So, yeah. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they, I mean, it looks like the Supreme Court really wants to hear this case because after Biden went ahead and put it back, uh, put the CDC moratorium back in place after everything that happened, I'm sure they're not very happy about it. <laughs> First, the brief charges the Biden administration with gamemanship, which the D.C. Circuit approved. In a remarkable display of candor, the president acknowledged that the bulk of the constitutional scholarship concluded that this extension was not likely to pass constitutional muster, but that by the time it gets litigated, it will probably give some additional time while we're getting that $45 billion out to people who are, in fact, behind in the rent and don't have the money. The White House, remarks by President Biden on fighting the COVID-19 pandemic, August 3, 2021. That gamemanship has paid off so far. <laughs> yeah, those are Biden's exact words. Okay, I saw the announcement that he made. Okay, and you know they're they're going to use his words against him because you know he said right there he he said it was not likely to pass constitutional muster. What a joke! I can't believe he put this in place. Second, the brief relies heavily on Justice Kavanaugh's balancing of the equities back in June. Nor do the equities justify allowing unlawful agency action to continue pending appeal. As Justice Kavanaugh explained the last time the moratorium was before this court, the equities would permit a stay only until July 31st, at which point clear and specific congressional authorization via new legislation would be necessary for the CDC to extend the moratorium further. Yeah, now they're reading back Kavanaugh's words from the last time that it hit the Supreme Court. So it's obvious that the landlords here, they, they want to basically remind the Supreme Court of the decision that they were trying to make and what they were trying to accomplish with their last decision. So <laughs> obviously the Department of Justice and the people fighting Biden's case, they, they have no arguments against these topics here. 
Third, the brief charges the government with pretext under the census case. By contrast, given the executive branch's recent statements and actions, the CDC's public health justification for the moratorium can only be described as pretextual. Here, the disconnect between the decision made and the explanation given. Department of Com Commerce versus New York 139 ESC uh, CT 2551 2575 2019 is apparent because the president has been candid that the latest extension of the moratorium and its defense in the judicial system is designed to get as much rental assistance out the door as possible in light of the executive branch's statement that its litigation efforts are designed to buy time to achieve its economic policy goals and the fact that landlords are now subject to federal criminal penalties for exercising their property rights depending on where they do business. Applicants respectfully ask this court to issue relief as soon as possible. Yeah, basically, the Biden administration put the CDC's new eviction moratorium into place and said that it was about COVID when it obviously wasn't. It had only to do with this, these financial things, you know, trying to get rental assistance out. Now that is not the, you know, the CDC has no control over, you know, finances and financial issues, et cetera. Basically they made up a lie to pass an eviction moratorium so that they could, you know, get their financial goals handled. And that is just dead wrong. Okay. And they're pointing that out. Fourth, the court asked for an immediate administrative stay. A month-long review period would give Biden all the time he wants. Specifically, this court should issue an immediate administrative order vacating the stay while it considers this motion. It took 26 days for this court to resolve the previous application in June, and a similar schedule would facilitate the executive branch's strategy to use an appeal to keep this going for at least a month. The White House, remarks by President Biden on strengthening American leadership on clean cars and trucks, um, August 5th, 2021. Following briefing, this court should issue an order vacating the stay that explains why the CDC lacks a statutory authority here. Yeah, he, he knew that he would be able to appeal and then get this thing dragged out all the way, hopefully till October 3rd. That's what he was hoping. And they're trying to you know work around that by you know, <laughs> working with the Supreme Court to handle that issue beforehand. Well, they didn't get a stay from the chief, but a three-day response time is pretty fast under the circumstances. Fifth, the court makes an appeal to the court's institutional concerns. But those weeks have come with a significant cost, not only to the nation's landlords, who are now coming up on a year of having their properties unlawfully occupied under threat of six-figure criminal penalties, but also on the reputation of all three branches of government. Unless this court vacates the stay and does so promptly, Congress will know that it can legislate through pressure campaigns and sit-ins rather than bicameralism and presentment. The executive branch will know that it can disregard the views of a majority of justices with impunity, and this court will know that its carefully considered rulings will be roundly ignored. No amount of federal rental assistance justifies that cost. I think this application gets granted soon. And so do I, okay? The author thinks that this application gets granted, so do I. And the, 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 one of the main points that they make there is that basically the, the courts should look at the fact that they will lose all their power and all their ability to keep the executive branch and the other branches of governments in check Okay, if, if their decisions are ignored by Biden or any other president or politician who thinks that they can just rule and do things that are counter to the Constitution and counter to um, what is um, the court interprets to be the Constitution. So, yeah, they need to take action and they need to take action quickly. So, yeah, that this is pretty much why I believe that the eviction moratorium is going to end, okay? The Supreme Court is going to throw it out, and if nothing else, to put a check on the executive branch's power. So, final thing for this video, um, there was a protest against the eviction moratorium up in New York City, and I liked seeing the pictures from this protest, okay? And they actually come from NorthJersey.com, and it says in the article, in Manhattan, 
Landlords protest the eviction moratorium outside the New York governor's office. And it's not really a story, but it just shows some pictures. So I'm gonna put those pictures here at the end of the video so that you can see them.